Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar about how to empower your company using Power BI. My name is Sarah Weeder. Um, I'm in the marketing department for MotiveWorks, and I'm going to be acting as sort of a moderator throughout the webinar. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone for registering and attending. We have about five minutes until we're officially starting. So as I see the attendees trickling in, we're going to hold off for a second um, and we'll begin closer to noon. So thank you.
All right, everyone, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, we have a lot of exciting content that we're going to cover in this um, hour span of time. So we're going to go ahead and get started to make sure that we have enough time to cover everything. Um, as I said before, my name is Sarah Weeder. I am a marketing associate with Motiveworks, and I'm going to be acting as a moderator for the duration of the webinar. So thank you so much for registering and attending, and we're really excited to share some really great information with you guys. All right, Sarah. Th thanks, Sarah. Um, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on whichever part of the world you are attending today. Uh, we are living in a very unprecedented time, and this is not an ideal situation. I hope everybody in your family and loved ones are healthy and safe uh, so we are uh, as, a, as a part of motiveworks we are going to start a series of webinars to really talk about how we can empower uh, organizations and people within organization to do their best using power bi data insights so this is the first series in the web in the series of five webinars this is the first webinar and we are going to be uh, talking about how do we use Power BI to replace Excel kind of a reporting. But before we get started, a brief intro about myself. My name is Tarun Agrawal, as I mentioned. I am a director of data and AI practice at Motiveworks. Motiveworks is a Microsoft Gold partner and a cloud solution provider company. We work with multi multiple of our customers uh, to help them adopt cloud and accelerate the, their transformation and innovation. Uh, prior to MotiveWorks, I have about 20 years of experience working in various leadership positions to deliver and strategize uh, data-driven solutions and leveraging various data assets, uh, whether it is big data, machine learning, those kind of uh, initiatives, uh, in more primarily in financial services company in uh, various companies in, in New York and uh, Philadelphia region. At MotiveWorks, we are using and leveraging Microsoft Azure data analytics and data services platform to enable our customers for digital transformations. A little bit background our our company Motiveworks. Uh, we are now about 10 years old. We started in 2010. Uh, we are headquartered in Maryland and we are a company which is born in cloud. So we always think cloud first and uh, we are Azure smart. We live and breathe uh, Microsoft Azure platform. We understand the details and integrity of Azure platform. We are leveraging Microsoft Azure platform to enable our, our clients uh, on digital transformation, to give them agility in their uh, infrastructure and workloads, uh, and have them build intelligent applications using data and AI and give them a connected uh, ecosystem on their services. We do that by elevating their infrastructure and data centers to adopt cloud and build cloud services, whether it is re-host, re-platform, re modernization or refactoring kind of a, uh, use cases, uh, help them modernize their application portfolio using uh, cloud first platform as a service, serverless kind of technologies, uh, use full stack of data and AI platform to you know, help them innovate coming up with new digital products and also help them manage their cloud data environment and also provide them any on-demand consulting that they need. So the purpose of uh, the, this web series of webinar is like I mentioned is to drive a data culture in people and organizations and enable the employees of the organization to, to use the data insights to grow their business and, and leverage it for their day-to-day -day operations. And currently, a lot of companies are still doing a lot of uh, BI and analytics using Microsoft Excel. Today, uh, this webinar is going to be focused on how we can really improve the entire BI solutions by replacing the Excel kind of reporting using Power BI as a solution. We are going <clears> to <throat> look at how, how companies are doing typically Excel reporting, how it can be replaced in with Power BI what kind of data exploration and collaboration capabilities uh, Power BI present <coughs> provides, and uh, how to build a report using 
uh, uh, by accessing and preparing the data in Power BI. Okay, with that, but before we jump into the content of today's webinar, we'll bring up a quick uh, poll for you on your screen. And Sarah, uh, whenever you're ready, let's put the poll on the screen. So really, let's try to understand where you are in your journey with, for Power BI. Uh, take a few moments to respond, which are de depending on whichever is your, whatever is your situation, and we will see uh, how, so that it will help us to really tune the, the today's content according to the responses. How are you doing, Sarah? You see a response is tickling in? Yep, we they're still trickling in, so I'll give a few more seconds just for everyone to Yep, respond. yeah, let's give everybody 10, 15 more seconds before we close the poll. All right, so it looks like just about everyone voted. 50% um, of people are thinking about using Power BI. 20% are in the early stages. 20% are actively using it. And 9%, 10% are using other Power BI products. Perfect. Uh, that, that's good to hear that more than 50% people are either thinking or are using in some shape or form, and there are a some 20% you said is are actively using Power BI in production. So that's great to hear. So that's a that's a good audience to share the content uh, that we have to present. I think that will be, I'm sure it will be really, really enlightening for some of the people. So let's talk about uh, digital transformation. So every industry is going through a lot of transformation today. Uh, every company is trying to become digital and they, every company in future will have to adopt digital transformation in order to be to stay competitive and be relevant in future uh, they have in using digital technologies and digital transformation it allows us to find new areas of opportunities allows us to engage with our customers in different through different channels and uh, meet their expectations but for any organization to really implement digital digitization and have a transformation in a, by, by, do, by enabling, they need to have a strategy to connect their systems and processes so they are able to serve their customer better, improve their product and services, and really empower the employees. The question comes is, how do we implement this strategy of uh, connecting the systems and then having all this empowerment in our organization? Well, at the heart and center of that is data. Data is driving the digitization uh, in every organization today. Today, uh, customers are connecting and interacting with companies through various different channels and telling the companies about what their expectations are, how would they like to, to get served. A uh, lot of products and, uh, and services are transforming a lot of telemetry data. Um, manufacturing units, uh, IoT sensors are transmitting a lot of data that tells us about how our operations are running, how our products and services are used. We can take all this data that, that we are getting through various, uh, various uh, areas and processes and systems.
Just a second, guys. It seems like we might be having some technical difficulties. I apologize. Hold on one second. Hey, Sarah, can you hear me? Yeah, you're good now. Not Perfect. sure what that was about. All right, thank you, Sarah. Yep, I, for some reason, I think we lost the mic from my side. All right, so I hope uh, everybody is still able to hear me. Uh, if you are having some problems uh, and you can't hear, please uh, send a message and uh, we will take a look on the on the text messages to see if, if some people are still having problems. But I'm assuming everybody is able to hear me, so I'm going to continue. Uh, unless as Sarah tells me otherwise in from the messages we are getting. So like I was telling at the heart and center uh, of uh, the implementation of digital uh, digitization and digital strategy is just lies with data. So we are collecting the data that's coming from various systems and processes and products and our customers. We can use this data and mine this data and to, to generate intelligence about what our customers are expecting. How should we improve our products and services to make them better? Uh, we can predict uh, before that any, any servicing needed to our manufacturing units and plants before something that we have a mechanical breakdown. And we can take all this intelligence that we are getting from our system and take actions, come up with the prescriptive actions and put it back into our systems and processes so we can improve uh, customer engagement, improve our processes, and empower our employees to do their best, come up with the best product and services that, that should be ideal. So this is how we can implement the digital strategy, and this is what is empowering all the successful companies uh, who are leveraging uh, data. So another, th another th thought process that we have seen based on experience of uh, working with a multiple of our customers using uh, on their digital journey is companies who are leveraging cloud data and AI are outperforming their competition. So let's talk about the evolution of BI and uh, how it, it has uh, uh, transformed over the years. So the first wave of BI started many, many years ago or a few decades ago was more around corporate BI where technology department controlled pretty much everything any user who needs any kind of reports make a request to technology teams technology teams will crunch the numbers from their corporate systems generate the reports and send it to them in excel or pdfs and, and email it to the customers then came the second wave of bi which was all around self-service bi where we are uh, giving the power to the analyst or power users or uh, data analyst to do the, their BI reports themselves. Uh, that's the start coming up with the pivot table, uh, Excel pivot table kind of an environment or BI tools uh, that started early on where power users who understand, who are semi-technical, who understand uh, how to use the different uh, technology solutions will connect to the data that is prepared by technology teams and uh, use their own functions and method and method routines to generate the, the BI from this from this data. And the, the way third way of which we are actually living in right now is actually called end user BI, where we are putting the information at the fingertips of everyone in our organization. Everyone is able to see uh, and use the data, the data, they are able to generate the data insights uh, themselves. So the data is available at the fingertips of every single employee in the organization, not just in a, hands of a couple of one handful of people so that's really uh, the end user bi and power bi is really empowering organizations to provide the insights and the data at the fingertips of everyone in the, in the organization how does power bi do that power bi 
allows you to experience your data, any data, whether data is generated coming from cloud solution systems or on-premises systems. Data is structured, unstructured, coming from relational databases, coming from different file systems. You can bring any data you want in Power BI and consume it any way you want, anywhere you want, whether you are trying to use BI reports on, on a browser or on your mobile devices or iPads or any other tablets or want to use consume the data through Microsoft Excel files or uh, embedded in any other app, uh, web applications or any other digital solutions that that your company has made. You can experience all of them. But what do an end user need when they are trying to use data and come up with the insights that they are looking for? The first thing that they really need is how do I access that data? That in itself was a big uh, hurdle uh, previously. We, 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 have been, we can't get access to our own data. So users need a flexibility, flexibility to connect to and access, connect and access to the data that they're really looking for, no matter where it is generating, uh, coming from. Not data, not always, it comes in a much, much cleaner uh, shape and form that is readily available. So they need ability to massage the data, to scrub the data and clean the data. So it's ready to be consumed in for, for downstream uh, use. They need ability to mash up and combine the data, to append the data, create uh, combined views so they can data can be uh, leveraged across the different domains and subject areas. They want to explore the data, play with the data, use data discovery, and then visualize the data, create the right insights that really tells them a data story that can be used for decision making. And once they are, they are visualized and come up with a story that really tells uh, something about the, the way they run the business, they would like to share and collaborate the data with others in their organization. So everybody collectively can use the data and, and, and make use of it for to drive their businesses. How Power BI allows you to do that? Power BI gives you the access to all your data. In, in, within Power BI, there are more than 115 data sources, uh, whether it is coming from data connectors coming from cloud applications like Salesforce or NetSuite or uh, Google Analytics, those kind of applications, or data generating from your corporate data sources. It could be ERP systems or any other applications that are built in your organization, which has a relational or non-relational databases behind the scene, or the big data coming from outside uh, within your environment, corporate environment, or even outside the environment. Uh, those, those also can be accessed using Power BI or Power data generating through various different files, whether it is text file, CSV file, JSON file, or any other file, you name it. Uh, Power BI allows you to access all your data. Power BI allows you to clean, combine, append, and uh, create your mesh, data mashups that can be used across. Uh, it allows you to create, define custom columns and calculations and generate new fields and use advanced analytics techniques so that can generate some correlations or regression kind of kind of features on your data. And once you have your data prepared, then Power BI allows you to explore the your data in a variety of different ways and forms. It comes with a comprehensive library of various visuals. And in addition to the out of the box visuals available in Power BI, it allows you to also either create your own visuals if you if you if you can want to do that or use uh, visuals which are created by other other people or other companies in the and use and bring it in from the marketplace in in, in power bi in your own reports some of those visuals are uh, free some of them re visuals require some kind of uh, subscription from those companies who have built these custom visuals so we can start to see a scenario where how can we replace an Excel-based reporting uh, with Power BI? But before we do that, uh, have a very small poll to understand what product you use or for BI product you use in your organization today. So Sarah, let's bring up the poll on everybody's screen and let's see what products are they using.
yeah uh, different companies use different products different companies used multiple products within the organization so depending on whichever situation you have in your organization just try to identify what is the primary product i mean i understand a lot of companies are using more than one product but what is your primary product that you or your organization is using How are you doing, Sarah? You're getting responses? Yep, they're trickling in still. We've got about 75% of you all that have voted. So give you guys a few more minutes to input your responses. All right, that looks like it's just about everyone. Um, so 35% of people are using Microsoft Excel, 17% are using Microsoft BI, 30% are using Power BI, and 17% are using other vendor products. Perfect. Thanks, thanks, Sarah. So this is this is good. I think 35% are using uh, Microsoft Excel or Microsoft, and another 17 are MSBI. So that's good, good. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. So let's see a, a scenario for uh, Excel-based reporting that typically happens. I think so the example, the scenario I'm gonna share with you is around sales analysis. And uh, let's take a look. So you can still see my screen, right, Sarah? Uh, Excel report? Yep, that's correct. Perfect. So the scenario that we are going to review today for uh, is around sales analysis is based on a electronic Troy product company uh, who sells uh, their products globally uh, in many countries across multiple continents. And uh, these products are made by multiple manufacturers and uh, the organization and the senior leadership are really looking to see how the sales are doing across countries, across products, across product categories, across time. Uh, what is the top selling product, which manufacturer has the most market share. Those, those kind of analytics uh, typically our uh, organization is looking for. In this scenario, and this is again a common scenario, there can be multiple flavors and varieties of uh, this specific scenario. Uh, the sales data is coming out from their uh, sales systems, which is uh, sales applications. So in this, in this scenario, the it's a monthly file that comes out from their sales system. And the file that you're seeing right now is the US sales data. So it has columns like product ID, which tells which product was sold on what date and at, at what location. Uh, zip code is telling us the location in what, how much quantity and what was the revenue of that sale. So it's like a sale data for US sales. And like that, uh, the data comes from other different countries also in a, from each, each specific country. So this is Canada sales data, pretty much same data, product, date, zip, units, and revenue. From Canada, Germany, we have the same thing, uh, Mexico and other countries uh, just as a sample. So this is all the data that, that is coming. And then in addition to data, the sales data, we also receive uh, the corporate uh, reference data around uh, our products. So this is the definition of product. The product ID we saw in the sales data, it's telling us what product it is. And actually the product name and the, uh, the segment is also combined together. That what is the product segment? What ca product category this product belongs to? Who is the manufacturer? Who is, who is manufacturing this particular product? And uh, what is the retail price for this product? And then similarly, we have the manufacturer data like the manufacturer ID we saw at the product level, uh, who is the manufacturer for that product, and so on and so forth. Uh, regarding the zip code that we saw here uh, in the sale, sale data, right? We saw the zip code information here. Uh, we have uh, the data, the reference data for zip code that tells us that this zip code belongs to what city, state, and country. 
So, so this is a typical scenario that uh, this organization is getting the data through various Excel files and uh, the, the power users of the financial analysts who are actually doing the sales analysis, they, they currently use Microsoft Excel to perform the sales analysis. And typically the, the process that looks like is they use all of these Excel files and combine them into one Excel file using various different VLOOKUPs. So here they use the VLOOKUP to combine, to connect the product ID to find the, what is the product name, to connect the product ID to get the manufacturer ID and then what is the, who is the manufacturer and then use the zip code to get the city and state and zip so on and so forth. Once they, they do all of these things, uh, they use pivot tables, they create pivot tables on top of that and uh, create the report. So they, this is a report that also shows them uh, the year, yearly revenue numbers for a particular manufacturer and so on and so forth. They create multiple reports. So that's another flavor of uh, analysis using pivot table that shows them the, the, their sales data by time and by manufacturer. And uh, typically the way the process works in most of the organization is the, the data analyst or the report analyst create these different kind of uh, analytical uh, pivot tables or pivot chart. Once, once they have created everything that they are really looking to uh, share, they save this file into a network or shared folder where uh, others in their teams can, can use it. This is file file itself is so huge. I think the US sales data itself is, uh, I believe, 144 MB. So the data itself is so huge that it cannot be emailed. What they typically do is they save this file into a network folder or upload it into SharePoint and where others can also use it and open it. And as you can see, as the size of, of these files keeps on growing, uh, it becomes more harder and harder to open these files. In fact, uh, a point will come when the sales file will not even load in Excel. And uh, every month or every, if it is a monthly file or weekly process, every time you get a new file, you will have to refresh the same process manually all over again. You have to apply the VLOOKUPs on the new file all over again, come up with a build, build the pivot tables and, and do, do all of this, this process again. And uh, to share the insights with the senior management, they take copy paste of this power charts and every other visuals or the tables that they want to share, put it into PowerPoints or, or PDFs and email it to the senior business leaders who, who need this information. And if the business leader asks us a follow-up question or they need another one, they have to come, come back to their Excel file, create that view that they are looking for, send it back into PowerPoint or PDF and email it to them. Again, another, another follow-up, so this, I said, the all repetitive process keeps on iterating. Everything is so fragmented, so siloed, and so manual. Uh, that's typically how organizations are doing BI and reporting, uh, who are not using uh, end user BI tools like Power BI. So let's take a moment to understand how this Excel based reporting can be transformed entirely using something like Power BI. So I, what I've done is I've created a Power BI report using by, by combining the exact same data that you are seeing, all the sales files and the product product and the zip geography data and the manufacturer data and loaded into Power BI. So I'm now in Power BI portal. So if you are those of you who are not familiar with uh, what is Power BI, so Power BI um, has a desktop tool, a product called Power BI Desktop, which is free to download. That uh, That's like a developer tool that allows you to combine and transform and create data mashups and create the visualization. And once you have created those things, you can publish it to Power BI service, which is called like, a, it's like a cloud-based Power BI service, which is where everybody can view and collaborate the data. So what I've done is I have used, uh, created the Power BI report and, and put together something called Power Sales Dashboard. So if I go to my sales dashboard, it gives a bird's eye view to the senior stakeholders about what is the largest market share of a, uh, of a manufacturer. And this happens to be a manufacturer called Van Astel. He has about 41% uh, 41 more than 41% market share. You can see what is the current year 
revenue and what was it uh, last year's revenue and uh, how it is doing in comparison to last year revenue here you can see the how the sales by broken down by each of the manufacturers are doing and in this case we can see when asdel is actually leaps and bounds ahead of anybody else you can see when asdel's uh, market share by different countries uh, here it's showing me germany has the biggest market share we also have loaded some social media data from Twitter to talk about the various retweets happening around uh, this company and uh, how the trend is going and also shows you the revenue by country. So this is like this just a starting point. We are just scratching the surface. And uh, from here, you can do multiple things. First thing you can do is I want to add a comment so that I can share with my team. And uh, so let's say I want to share what I'm finding with Sarah. I can put a comment here, Sarah. See how market share is growing. Okay, and I can post it here, and Sarah will get an insight. And everybody else who comes here now, they can see that there is a message here, and they can see what am I trying to collaborate and, and tell uh, anything about and to the other people. From here, we can actually view insights about the data. And what this is doing, this is a very powerful feature within Power BI. What it is going to show you is it will generate the insight of how this market share is growing. And for some reason, it is taking longer than I expected it to take. It actually runs some regression and correlation behind the scene and tells you what is driving this 47% market share. We'll come back to it if you little later. Let's go back to our dashboard and see other features of uh, what is available we can set alerts uh, on power in uh, on this so i'm looking at this particular market share i'm interested in keeping an eye on this market increasing market share of an Arsdell. so i can create an alert that says that show me when this market share of uh, when Arsdell goes above 50 percent and uh, send me an alert i can i can you can send me an alert once every 24 hours or any other frequency i want and i can save and close it will send me an email it will also sell me on the send me an alert on the portal itself that uh, the market share has crossed 50 percent. so i can keep an eye on the market share i can subscribe to this dashboard uh, i can say i want uh, i want to subscribe to my dashboard and uh, send me this sales dashboard once every day or once every week or whatever frequency we want and at what specific time and uh, send me this as an email. So when I set up this, I will get an email and uh, which will look something like this. So when I subscribe, the same dashboard will come to me as an email. You can see I do not have to go anywhere. I can see right there in my email and if I want to directly go, I can just hit go dashboard and it will take me to the dashboard page right here. I can set it as a favorite so I can see it on my home page that I want to see this uh, every single day that uh, I'm looking for. I can generate uh, and see who is uh, the usage metrics, who is using how much of this. And then I can start interacting with my data and ask questions. If there is something that is not there, I think on, on the dashboard that I'm looking for, I can start asking uh, questions to Power BI by country. Let's do revenue, revenue, revenue by country. So it's, it gives me a breakdown of country uh in 2018 so you can ask the questions and uh, power bi will present the way you're asking the question it's like talking to power bi naturally the way you naturally you ask questions to google search you can search for the data right inside power bi and power bi gives you the answer that you're looking for without without even going into the the dashboards and the slicing and dicing features out of the box uh you, senior users will be able to ask naturally the questions and get the answers they are looking for without going back to the uh analyst who has created the report but this is just a scratching the surface from here if you want to see 
uh, and analyze our data and slice and analyze data, we can click on that one particular thing and it takes you the actual report. This is called a Power BI report. What we were looking for earlier was a Power BI dashboard. So, so as you can see, uh, this is my report. I'm looking at the 47% market share. Like I've mentioned, this manufacturer, Van Astel, has a highest market share uh, of more, much more than any other any other manufacturer. Within the market share in North America, they have the most sales. I can see North America has about 47, 43% market share. If I look at Australia, Australia has 55% market, percent market share for Van Astel and uh, it's actually doing much blood, uh, better in Europe. In Germany, they have 64% uh, market share. One other thing I have noticed is I'm not sure if you are able to see, when I look at Van Astel's revenue, uh, I see like there's a huge spike from between 2017 to 2018. I do not see the that level of spike. Everything else is much more flattened. But I see in Australia something really happened, and there's a spike from 2017 to 2018. So let's something interesting that happened here. Let's try to see what exactly is going on. Uh, so I come and see the manufacturer data, and I'm looking at. Oh, I can see all the manufacturers if I am interested in. But right now I'm interested in looking for only for Van Astel. So I selected that as a manufacturer from my slicer, and I'm, I'm looking at the data. I'm seeing the revenue of an Astel by country, by time, by product categories, and I see uh, different things. So let's see how this, uh, the Van Astel is doing in, in America. I see a, a gradual growth of the revenue year over year within America. Urban category has the most percent or most of the revenue, about 99.95, they sell it in America. When I look at uh, Australia, I see the jump. I think the one jump I was talking about, you see percentage growth. The, the curve is steeper. Even the size of the revenue also has increased more in 2018 than 2017. And uh, it, urban product has 97% market share. When I look at uh, Japan, I see similar to USA story. So it seems like something is happening in Australia because things have changed. So let's look at Australia and see uh, how the breakdown of category look by, by segment. And I see that convenience, extreme moderation is about equal percentage in Australia versus uh, when I look at uh, US data, the percentage is much more skewed towards convenience and moderation. So something is a different kind of behavior within Australia, I, I see that. So well, let's try to see what exactly has happened. And uh, if I look at only 2016 data, I can filter Australia. So now I'm looking at, only Australia data only for 2016 and the breakdown by the different product segments. And I see convenience is the highest one within 2016. I go to 2017 and I still see, okay, I see a change. Moderation has become the highest one in 2017. And the 2018 where he has the steep jump, I see the extreme, which used to be number three has now jumped to number one. Something is happening within extreme segment and let's look at the product. So I see like the Maximus UE4 is the highest selling product in 2018 in Australia. And let's try to see if we can identify a little bit more and drill the data into more. So I'm trying to go into 2018, how the numbers are looking. And I, if I broke down 2018 data by quarters, I see like uh, it's, uh, the low quarter, second and third, but fourth quarter has a much higher sales. If I break down quarters by month and I see it's not really telling me the story. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to all the months at the same time. So now I'm looking at all the 2018 months of, of Australia data broken down by each month and I see there is a huge spike in September and October as opposed uh, uh, in comparison to anything else. So this is interesting. I want to see what's really happening in September. And uh, if I drill down to day level data now for Australia, I see that towards the end of September in the last few days, there was a huge spike in revenue uh, in September. And I come down, come back and try to see the same thing for October. And I see that 
the October also had a f some huge spikes in the beginning of the month. Seems like something is happening uh, towards end of September and beginning of October. And uh, I can see specifically is how the specific products are doing. And I see the spike is even bigger for this product Maximus UE04 in the beginning of September and October. So something interesting to keep an eye here. So like this, you can do this. You can create a bookmark if you want to add a bookmark so that you can come back to this insights. You can save it here. And now you can come back. So I can go back to the any other bookmarks I have or the view, but I want to come back to the view I just created myself. I can come back and it will bring bring down to the same insights where I, I got the data. So as you can see, the same data that we have used from micro, the Excel files, how powerful data insights we can generate using Power BI. So I'm going to do a quick time check. We are about 20 minutes left in the in the in our time. So I think we are running a little short of time. But let me show you quickly how do we how can we create this kind of uh, data. Uh, uh, thing create this Power BI report to get the data that we are looking for. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm quickly going to show you how can I clean and combine the data so that I can generate the similar data insights we have seen in Power BI. And I think I need a little bit more than 18 minutes left. So I will try to do a little bit faster to see if we can combine all the different files that I showed you in the beginning and uh, Leverage it. So I'm I'm looking at all the international files uh, that are that all the Mexico, Germany, Japan files that we saw, and I'm trying to load them. So I I have all these files that are that are uh, away coming from different international countries. I'm gonna combine them within Power BI, and uh, and then try to come up with the views so we can create the same similar kind of uh, dashboards and visuals in Power BI. So I'm going to say load this data in Power BI. What I'm doing is I'm loading all those Excel files, the CSV files that we have received from one from each country into something called Power Query. So this is a Power Query editor. You can see once I brought all the international sales entire folder, it got all the different source files data combined as uh, one table in Power Query editor. And I see uh, there's a country name here. I do not need this file name. So I'm just going to right click and remove this file name. I don't really care. I see first thing right off the bat is the zip code is showing as a number. And as you know, there can be leading zeros in, in zip code, like my zip code has zero in front. So the, it's it's not going to do a justice. So I'm going to actually, and uh, this is not going to work. So I'm going to actually close and discard this data and try it one, one more time. This should, sometimes this is giving a problem that it is not converting the number format into the text format that I wanted to convert. So I'm gonna try one more time and see if this is gonna work. Okay. So basically I'm trying to convert and I know that there's an error that happens because if it is not giving me a warning message before the data conversion, it's not actually converting. So that's the reason I have to start over again. And let's see if it's gonna work this time. Okay. All right, so it's showing up here and let's try to see if I can convert it to text and okay, perfect. This time it works. So it should give me a warning for change column type because I'm changing it from number to text. And I say, yes, I want it. I know what, what I'm doing. So I changed it to a text column type and I do not need, so I'm gonna remove this. So I have loaded all my international sales data. I'm going to bring in the US sales data, which is a CSV file. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna say, load my US sales CSV file here. And I see the same CSV file. I am going to 
bring it in Power BI, the Power Query Editor. So now you see, I have got my US sales and I have got my international sales, but it will be really good if I can combine these two data as a one table so I can do the country analysis together. And I see the same issue here. The zip code is showing as number and I'm gonna make it text and it's gonna give me the warning. Yes, I want to replace, that's perfect. And now, now I'm gonna combine these two files. So the way you can combine it is by doing an append query. So I'm gonna do an append query and I'm gonna say, I want to combine two tables and uh, append two international sales. So I'm gonna append. So as you can see, the moment I appended, all the international sales data came into my table in, in sales table and the country column was not there in the US sale. So it added a new column called country, but all the all the rows which has US because there was no country is now null. So we need to make sure that this gets a country value. How do we do that? I'm going to add a conditional column and say that if my column name country is equals to null, then I want it to be USA, else I want it to be country. So I'm gonna add a new column based on this condition I've defined. So as you can see, it just added a new column, brand new column, and then it has the USA and the original column was had null. I do not need this column anymore. So I'm gonna remove this from my thing and I'm gonna just quickly rename this to country. So I got my, all the data, international sales data as a part of the sales table. I'm gonna quickly change the data type to a decimal number so we can do like a dollar currency kind of queries. So this data is good to go. I do not need international sales. I'm gonna remove it from loading. I do not want it to load. Now for me to also do uh, all the data analysis across other reference data, I'm going to load my reference data file, which was this BI dimension file that we have seen initially. Once I do that, it's gonna load my reference data in Power Query Editor. And it's showing me these are the different various tabs available. I need the product data, I need the geography data, and I need the manufacturing data. So I'm just going to load these three tabs from the Excel file that I originally saw. And uh, it's gonna quickly bring this file here. You can see all of them has come here, but we need to clean, do a lot of cleanup. Uh, this is my manufacturing table. I see like a lot of junk rows in the bottom, so I do not need it. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna say remove the bottom three rows from this data because those are the three junk. It automatically removes it, but then I don't want it to be like a manufacturer ID and this column, the format is not good. So I'm gonna transpose this data. And now it has made columns into rows and rows into column. This looks much better, but I still see the first column actually has the column names. So what I can do is I say use first column as headers. Perfect. So my manufacturing table is now looking really good. I have the IDs and the names and the logos and everything. Let's look at how my geography is looking. Okay, so geography right off the bat, there are two junk rows at the top. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna say remove top rows this time because last time I removed the bottom rows, I'm gonna remove top two rows. So that thing is gone and I see the same thing. The first row now has a column name. So I'm gonna say use first name as a column header. So everything looks good, but I have the same issue here. I do not want it to be number. I want it to be a text and I still gives me the same replace current, so I'm gonna replace it. So this looks good, okay? Then it looks like the last table, the product table. So product table has few things going on. First thing I see is the way the data is, it is actually the first row has the, the category, but everything else is blank. And uh, what I can do here is I can do transform and fill down. So what it will do is it will put the same thing to all the blank columns underneath until it finds a different category name. So that's done. I do not like the way product and segment are in one column. I want to split them into two columns. So what I can do is split column by delimiter. And I see there's a pipe delimiter in between the product name and uh, the segment. I'm gonna give pipe as my delimiter and 
what power bi is going to do is it will change them into two columns i quickly will change rename this to product and i will rename this to segment all right i'm looking good one last thing i see is the price column also has a currency and the price together i do not like that i would like it to be separate so what i can do is add column from example and this is a cool feature that i have not seen in other bi products so what i'm going to do is i'm adding a column and look what happens i'm going to type 412.13 the first price value i see in the first column and just enter automatically power bi will detect what i'm trying to do that i'm trying to get, just get the second value from this column as a new column and i say okay and it creates me a new column called uh, which with only the price in it i can double click and i can change this column name to msrp okay that's my column so this is good i also want the currency so i'm going to do the same thing i'm just going to do add column from exam from all column as an example same thing i'm going to write here usd and enter and it took the first part of this column and repeated it as a new column again this is what i was looking for i just say okay change the column name to currency okay and now i do not need this column so i can just remove this column so i'm looking good i or i have to just make sure that this is not text it is a fixed decimal number so my currency is good my manufacturer is good segment product product id everything is good so i like my data preparation everything that i needed to do i'm just gonna load it in power bi and start building the charts and visualization we saw in on the power bi service on the dashboard so what it's going to do is going to load all the data in power bi right here it will take about a minute so let's give it a time because the files are big i think we saw us sales is 144 mb i think australia sales is about 60 mb so it's going to take some time to load this data what it is doing is it is loading the data from excel into power bi memory so now everything we do is going to run out of off of memory so that's why that's where power that's and that's how the power bi gets its performance everything is going to be uh, residing in memory in a much compressed columnar storage that uh, using the vertipack engine of power bi that gives it the high performance that power bi is really known for so as you can see sales.csv it is read about 58 59 mb i think it's about 144 mb so it's going to take some more time to load all these files once it loads we are going to be just pretty much we can show um, start to make some charts and visuals and then we can wrap up but i know we have six minutes left so i want to leave a few minutes for q and a in the end but just i just need two more minutes guys bear with me okay started to australia file us is done and it all depends on you know, the memory which is in in your computer and right now i think i have a lot of excel files open the same file so i think it's probably taking a little bit longer because i'm, I'm using a lot of my uh, memory of my laptop Okay, it has moved to Germany now. Everything else is something pretty much small. It's okay, Japan, Mexico, Nigeria. Okay, it's pretty much done. All right. So what it has done is nothing happened, right? Because what it has done is it has created all these tables in Power BI. And now we can start creating 
charts and visualization the way I was doing it. So if I just click on revenue, it will build a revenue chart. And uh, I say I want to see it by country. So it's going to break down this chart and I do not want, I want the horizontal stack chart. So you can see I can do country by revenue by country as a chart. I want to do revenue by year as another chart. I can do revenue by year. I can, yeah, I can also make it a horizontal chart if I want to. If I want to just filter it for one manufacturer, I can just do that and say, add to page level filter and i can say i do not want to see for all the manufacturers i want to only see for ben arstel that we were seeing so so you can see we can start doing building charts and graph the way we want i think it's it's like it has become like much more like pivot table now uh, you can put slicer if you want to and say i want to put a slicer based on date and you can say I want to do it based on date, so you can start to reduce which dates are you want to do it, and the data will change. That's all I think uh, we have time to cover for. We have few minutes left, so Sarah, I'm gonna turn it back to you and see if there are any questions. But I think I hope I was able to show them how we can convert and transform and replace an Excel-based BI reporting using Power BI, and gives a lot of powerful features to everybody in the in the enterprise depending on either they are power users or a analyst who want to slice and dice and mine the data themselves or they are the senior executive business leader who just want to consume the data and ask the questions to the power to power bi on the the answer they are looking for with that sarah i'm going to turn it back to you and see if you can take some q a thanks Tarun. um so right now guys you feel free to ask any questions that you have um you can just type it into the little box um for the questions or into the chat and once you input the questions i'll go ahead and read them out loud to tarun all right so we do have one question um the question is, can we automate power a Power BI solution? Okay, thanks, Sarah. Great question. Yes, I think so. I, th I briefly touched upon in the beginning, like when typically when Excel users are trying to do this solution, every time then they will get a new Excel file, they will have to repeat that manual process all over again, applying VLOOKUPs, creating pivot tables, doing the pivot charts and everything. But we can automate this. I think as you saw, I loaded the files from a folder. We can automate this whole process. So all the data cleaning up and the massaging of the, excuse me, I was doing, it's only applied one time. So once I've done that, I can fully automate this solution. Every time, all we need to do is hit refresh. Whenever we get a new data, it's gonna load, apply the same transformations that I applied to the new data without any manual work. And we can also automate it to post it on the Power BI service. So yes, it can be fully automated. Great question, thanks. Great, awesome, thank you, Tarun. Um, and then I guess one last question that we have here. Um, does everyone need a license? Okay, another great question. Uh, so Power BI Desktop, the one tool that, the tool that I'm using right now, that is free to download. Anybody can go to powerbi.com and download this Power BI desktop or they can, if they are your Windows users and have Windows 10, they can go to the uh, Microsoft store and download Power BI desktop app. So you always remain up to date. You don't have to down download that because it's a monthly up to, uh, refresh of this version. So it's free to download that you don't need any license or all, all I, whatever I showed you today, it, anybody can do it free of cost. There's no cost involved. But the moment I want to share this, my solution on Power BI service like right here, then I can do it free, still free of cost in my documents. I think uh, as you can see, if I go to my home here and I show them all the workspaces. So there is a, there are all, these are all the different workspaces and to post and view the data from these workspaces, you need a Power BI license. But 
I can just use it myself in my workspace and it, it you do not need a license for that. But to share and collaborate with other users, you will have to post it on a public workspace or the workspace you have access to with other users and everybody will need a pro license, which in a typical world, it is a 9.99 per user per month. But there are various options available. You can be a Power BI Premium or you can be an Office 365 E5 users to get even a cheaper price than 9.99. When I say 9.99, it is $9.99 per user per month. Great right. question. Thank you, Tarun. Um, we do have a couple more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and read those out to you while we're here. Um, we are actually, I just want to be mindful. We are, I think, a minute over than one o'clock time. So is it OK if we can answer those questions through email of whoever has responded, ask the yeah. questions? Yeah. Um, so I guess, Tarun, if you want to pull up the slide with your email address, um, we do have a few questions. So those of you that asked questions, thank you so much for asking them. Um, we are running a little bit over, so feel free to email your questions to Tarun and um, he'll be able to answer those questions um, ASAP. Um, yep. So before we conclude the webinar today, Sarah, like I mentioned in the beginning, this is the first in the series of five webinars. So we do have other webinars coming up, uh, I think once every week, Every I think we have the same time, same day of the week. It's gonna be Tuesday, uh, every Tuesday following uh, this week uh, at 12 o'clock. So please feel free to join and I encourage everybody to register to learn more about Power BI. How can we ingest and consolidate and, and even do powerful things like bringing artificial intelligence in Power BI. So regarding Q&A, I think uh, please feel free to email me your questions. My email is uh, shown on the screen right now in front of everybody. So with that, I know uh, apologies we are two minutes over the slotted time, but I hope it was a valuable session and you got something uh, something new today. And please, uh, I encourage everybody to join all the future webinars in the series. Thank you, everyone. Um, you will be receiving an email in the next 24 hours that will have a link where you can register for the next webinar so keep an eye out for that um thank you so much tarun for sharing all that information with us um we really appreciate it sure thanks sarah thanks for hosting it i really appreciate it